Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to our Cooler League. So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to be adding to the League today. I'm going to be adding the Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120 White. Don't think the white will do much about it in terms of performance, etc, etc, but I thought it was a quite nice one. It looked really good for in terms of if you're going to do a white build. So, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, go through the install. As you can see behind me, it's already on the test bed, so I've installed it already. So let's, I'll put, up, put the video up of the install and then I will give you my thoughts and conclusions on the install. Then we will go through the scores, uh, go through the, res the test results and give you the final score and also then my final conclusion. All right, on with the install. So install wise, it actually installs very in a very similar fashion to the AK620. There is a, one minor difference for me. Um, when, when the way you do it, you have a backplate, and by the way, backplate wise, because it's got the fixed studs, I would think it would not be uh, compatible with socket 1700. You probably will need to get in contact with Thermalright to get an adapter. But that aside. Um, you put the, you put the backplate through, then you attach like these long like barrels, which has got like the usual washer that goes towards the motherboard. So when you screw it on, it doesn't put like any marks or pressure on the motherboard in a due way with metal on it or whatever or conducts and whatnot. Then you have to put two arms across, which has two little screws that stick up, which you attach the cooler to. With the AK620, um, when you're trying to mount the arms. The screws that you attach to put the arms on, I've got little hand screws, so you can just hold and screw it with your hand and then use a screwdriver to tighten it up. On this, they're tiny little screws and it is so fiddly. It's such a pain and I actually managed to lose one of the screws because it fell off the screw, uh, the screwdriver as I was trying to manipulate it in. I started off doing the install with the good old trusty um, screwdriver I got with the one of the other coolers and I ended up moving to the new Linus Tech Tip screwdriver which I ordered a while ago and finally arrived a few weeks ago and I have to say um, congratulations Linus it's a great screwdriver I have to say it the the mechanism uh, for the ratchet is amazing the magnet strength on the end of the screwdriver is just amazing even when installing that cooler and trying to put little screws in it just really kept a good tight hold of those little screws and I didn't have any problems beyond that once I got the bars in place and I was able to screw them in so I actually do recommend it a screwdriver it's a little bit on the expensive side I have to say but it's for me it's worth it because it's real quality all right, now I've waffled on about the uh, line of screwdriver and partly install. Once you actually mount the cooler on, which is again relatively simple because you just line it up, it sits on those screws fairly easily, so you don't have to, you don't find yourself mushing the uh, coolant around much by trying to get it in position or whatever. Uh, and then you just tighten it up, and voila, cooler installed. Oh, oh sorry. Then you put the uh, 
fans on and again it's these the horrible metal clips that go on the side but again with this cooler like the AK620 the clips manage to stay in place they don't wiggle around because there's a lot of um, vibration resistant material around the hole so it tend, they tend to stick so it was easy to put on one slight other foible I noticed when doing the install is that the cables coming from the fans is white which is really cool again if you're doing a white build it would match but then the splitter is black now to be fair if you look at the cables behind the motherboard tray when installing it you don't see that splitter but I just think it would have been nicer for uniformity to have that white but that's just a little thing anyway but apart from that those little screws are a bit of a pain in the backside but the rest of the install was fine all right so now I've gone through the install let's have a look at how it did in terms of temperatures etc and then we'll go through the scores and where it finishes in the league table so base temp the thermal right cooler started off with a base temperature of 23 degrees which actually puts it pretty much on top of the pile it was a little bit ahead of the uh, AK620 but when we get to the base sound we'll find out why so base sound it was basically the reason it was slightly cooler than the AK620 in base was because the fans were actually audibly go you could see they were going faster and you could hear them a bit more so the base sound was around 36 um, so which is a little bit higher than, than the uh, the cool AK620 which was 34 so the fans were going a little bit more which is why it was a little bit cooler so Cinebench score it finished with a score of 4833 which puts it above the likes of the Scythe Humor 2 which is a great result but it puts it a little bit behind the likes of the AK620 and the likes of the AM Choice cooler which was a Three, all in one cooler so a 360 so that's not a surprise so the average max temperature and this is a fantastic result was 57.7 celsius which puts it top of the table it even managed to beat the am choice uh, 360 cooler it's kind of not a surprise because as we'll get to with the max sound in a second the fans really did go good go up now keep in mind with all of these coolers, I'm not changing the fan profile in the BIOS. It's just that the fans themselves go a certain percentage and the, the, these fans obviously go at a higher RPM. So therefore they're going more and they're making more noise because as we get to max sound, as we can see in the max sound, the, the sound was 39.5, which was decidedly audibly louder than the AK620. Um, and it was also louder than, say, uh, the Scythe Humor. So it did make a bit of noise to get that lower temperature, but to be perfectly honest, it wasn't that much of a difference, and to get that low of a temperature, I'd take it. So from that wise, you clearly can't go wrong. The scoring ranges have, have remained the same. So league table-wise, you can see that the, the Thermal Right Cooler is coming in a very respectable fifth. It's only uh, th two points off second, and it's in there with on only one point off the likes of the uh, NHU-12S and the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. So it's it's pretty much a, a really good cooler. I think there's a couple of points that sort of dropped points for me. Uh, was the install with the pain in the backside with the screws. And also the actual look, It's there's no RGB on the fans. Um, but it's just, it looks a little bit little bit bricky and there might be a reason for that and I'll get to that in my conclusion but yeah very respectable finishes in fifth so well now I've gone through the scores let's get to my final conclusion so the thermal right cooler what are my final thoughts the first thing I'm going to lead with is the price because this is a two fan cooler that cools to 57 celsius on a pretty warm CPU, which is why I continue to use this um, CPU, by the way, the 10700K, because it does get quite warm. Um, and it does all of this for under $50. So although, as I mentioned in my scoring, the cooler looks a bit bricky, the installation's a little bit more fiddly, but for what you're paying, wow. Wow, it's, it's just, you can't knock it. So, <laughs> If I was looking to buy this cooler, would I? Absolutely, it's a big thumbs up from me. The only thing I would say, as I said earlier in the video, is if you're gonna do socket 1700, 
you might need to look into getting an adapter because I think with the back plate that I've got it will not fit with a socket 1700. With AM5 I think you'll be fine because it's fully compatible with AM4 and all AM4 coolers pretty much go up to AM5 so you should be fine. So would I buy this? Absolutely. It's a great cooler. It, the performance was fantastic. You know, it's, it's sitting in a very respectable position in the league. It's for $50, you really, really can't knock it. All right, so I hope you found that information useful. If you did, please toss a like on the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I'm always looking to add coolers to the Cooler League. As I've mentioned before, I'm going to be adding some more coolers and here's a cooler I'm looking to add. So I'm going to be adding the Deep Cool Castle 360EX. And I'm also going to be looking to add, I'm going to also be adding the ROG, if I can say this all list, the Strix LC2 280 ARGB, <gasps> which is a 280 cooler. So far, I've only added a 360. The other one I mentioned is a 360. This is a 280, which is a combination you don't normally get. You normally get like 240s, 360s, that kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting to add this and see how it does. So if you want to see uh, how those coolers do, also hit the bell icon because then you'll be notified when that content is available. All right, that's all of the YouTube stuff done. Uh, again, I hope you found this useful. If you've got any comments in terms of questions or anything else, please them down below. And as always, take care.